I felt it all the time as I passed through the hood. My mom used to hate it, but I thought it smelled good. I used to follow my nose like two Cam Samuel. Getting in the weed, smoking the air. Thanks for rolling up to Tuba Mully. This is Certified Pothead. Smoking a horn. Late boarded. Early afternoon spliffs. You know what we about to do, Bird Club. We about to jump into these cannabis conspiracy theories. Which I like the cannabis conspiracy. Today's theory is about the tower. I set the scene. An enormous tower shooting up towards the heavens. Built by a bunch of ambition. Just, oh, wow, I was trying to talk. Built by a bunch of ambitious ancient stoners. Who thought, hey, what if we literally got high? The Tower of Babel might not have been about reaching the divine after all. What if instead of being a bold architectural statement, it was just history's most legendary smoke session that spiraled out of control? Grab your hard hats, folks. Put on your walking shoes. Because this is going to be one hazy hike through architectural ambition, cosmic misunderstandings, and construction workers who forgot what they were doing halfway through. To the ancient architects standing around in their tunics, looking at the sky and thinking, what's the fastest way to reach the gods? Stairs? Nah. Ladders? Too much effort. Let's build a tower. While we're at it, turn each floor into a different level with chill. And voila, the Tower of Babel was born. Or as I like to call it, the original high rise. They probably figured out that if they could just keep climbing, they'd eventually hit the ultimate sweet spot where altitude and attitude align perfectly. The higher you go, the better the buzz, right? It's like the ancient version of modern rooftop bars, except instead of overpriced cocktails, they're passing around their very own sacred herb. And just like any good party, as the tower went up, so did their ambitions. But here's the thing. These folks didn't think small. Nah, bruh. They were thinking sky's the limit. They didn't just want to touch the clouds. They wanted to inhale them. You ever notice how all big ideas start out with someone saying, it's going to be. But by the time you're halfway through, you're just trying to remember why you started in the first place. I wouldn't try to tan the hide of a deer. Ended up with a bunch of just salty fur. Same energy, really. Babylonians figured that the higher they went, the closer they get to the divine clarity. Little did they know the only thing getting higher was their confusion. Altitude wasn't making them smarter. It was just making them more winded. Here's a riddle for you. What goes up never stops. Stack so tall, they reach the tops. Yet once it's built, it's never done. I'm always under the sun. What am I? Got to admire dedication to detail. The Tower of Babel wasn't just a random pile of bricks. It was a vibe. Imagine, each floor had its own theme. Like the first ever high concept club. One floor for lounging, another for deep philosophical debates, or at least trying to remember what the debate was about. In the top floor, that was the exclusive God's Only section. Where the air was thin and the conversations were even thinner. Here's the kicker. These ancient builders didn't have modern tools. They were stacking bricks with nothing but muscle and shield willpower. And possibly snacks. No cranes, no bulldozers, just a lot of... Hey, can you pass me that rock? Nah, the other rock. Talk about a workout. These guys weren't just building a tower. They were building character. Maybe a bit of paranoia. Depending on how... Relax, they were. You ever try build IKEA furniture with someone? It's like a relationship test and a puzzle from hell rolled into one. Now imagine doing that, but your instructions are in ancient Sumerian. Your coworker keeps wandering off mid sentences to chase butterflies. Sound productive? What if they thought higher altitudes would help them focus? Spoiler alert: They didn't. Instead of enlightenment, they probably got altitude sickness and a lot of. Wait, what were we talking about again? Here's another riddle for you. Put it together, but I'm often ignored. Without me, your structure's floored. You can mix me, pour me, make me right. But without foundation, I'm out of sight. What? Now the Bible says that God confused their languages. But let's be real here. If you get enough people in one place with different dialects and let's say a few 
herbal refreshments in the mix. It's only a matter of time before everyone's speaking gibberish. You got one guy trying to explain where the next brick goes, but all anyone hears is blah, 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 blah. Just pass the pipe. And halfway through, the conversations stop being about construction and more about existential crisis. You know how it goes one minute. You're discussing architecture and the next someone's asking, do you think fish get thirsty? The whole thing probably fell apart when the bricklayer on 457 started thinking too hard about whether or not, whether or not, what is a nart, bro? Whether or not the stars have feelings. Honestly, I can relate. I had an entire conversation with people where by the end of it, I'm just nodding along, trying to piece together how we went from talking about weekend plans to the nature of reality. It's a mental version of dropping a load of bricks on your feet. It wasn't divine intervention. It was just too many distractions. They probably forgot what they were building halfway through and started talking about their feelings instead. It's a classic move. Here's another riddle for you. I'm invisible, but hold the key. Without me, your business can't be. I don't weigh much. I don't cost a thing. Without me, thing. Here's a theory. What if the real reason a tower fell apart was because of a huge strain war? The Tiva enthusiast on one side trying to hype everyone up and keep them working while the Indica folks are on the other side curled up in the feeder position on top of unfinished bricks. It's probably like mixing Red Bull and chamomile tea. Not exactly a recipe for focus. Bad to try to get everyone to agree on the vibe. One group wants to push through while another group has discovered that sitting on a half-finished wall and watching the sunset is the real spiritual journey. Productivity hit an all-time low, bruh. But I'm betting the snacks hit an all-time high. It's like playing a party where half the people want to play board games and the other half just want to lie on the couch and talk about their dreams. Boiler, nothing gets done. And the only thing everyone agrees on is that the pizza should have been ordered an hour ago. Forget language barriers. The real conflict was strained preference. You can't mix people who want to brainstorm with people who are currently contemplating the meaning of cheese. Tower collapse is inevitable. Here's another riddle for you. There when the work begins, but I disappear before it ends. Though I don't last, I made the plans. But without me, no builder can. By the time the tower reached its not so glorious haunt, everyone was too spaced out to care. The dream of touching the sky had morphed into the reality of trying to remember why they even started this in the first place. What began as an epic architectural achievement ended up as a giant half-finished monument to overthinking. Maybe they ran out of material. Maybe they just got bored. Or maybe they realized halfway up there was a better way to spend their time. Like lying down. Tower of Babel might not have reached the gods. But it definitely reached new heights in terms of ambition. They set out to build a stairway to heavens, but what they got was a pile of unfinished business and probably a lot of confused bricklayers wondering what day it was. Honestly, I think the Babylonians were on to something. Sometimes it's not about finishing the project. It's about starting it with a lot of enthusiasm and then abandoning it when the snacks run out. I can't count how many times I started something only to get halfway through and think, oh, this is good enough. The Tower of Babel is just a really big version of every DIY project I ever started. They didn't fail because of divine punishment. They failed because they had the ancient equivalent of, we'll finish it next weekend. So what happened with the Tower of Babel finally crumbled? Well, you're halfway through what's supposed to be the greatest architectural achievement in human history. But instead of admiring your work, you're watching it collapse like a deck of cards built by someone who didn't understand gravity. Bricks are falling, scaffolding the swaying, and everyone standing around like, oh, that's right, the finale found. So what have we learned from this deep dive into the Tower of Babel? Well, for one, construction is hard, especially when half your team is too busy discussing whether the stars are just God's night lights. Secondly, it's probably a good idea to check your foundation before you try to touch the sky. Third, maybe just maybe ancient architects were also ancient procrastinationists. That that is not how you say that.
We started out strong, but then got a little too sidetracked by life's little distractions. And, you know, big commercial smoke session. But even though the Tower of Babu didn't go exactly as planned, it left us with a story for the ages. A story about ambition, communication, and the importance of knowing when to quit. So next time you find yourself halfway through a project and wonder whether it's worth it to keep going, just remember. Tower of Babel and ask yourself, is this my moment to reach the heavens or is it my moment to sit back and say, I'll finish it later. The answers to the riddles. Skyscraper, concrete, air pressure. I'll see you on the next one, bro.